right, hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Beef Up Front podcast here on PigSwap Media. This is your host Ryan Coyle. My favorite time of year coming up next week. Uh, we have college basketball tipping off. Me and Sean going to be doing a few more episodes previewing the conferences. Uh, but over these next few days, I'm going to be giving two new episodes. Today, I'm going to be bringing down my top 10 incoming freshmen for this year's college basketball season in my eyes. Uh, and then I'm also going to be doing, within the next few days, my top 10 returning players as well to the college game. So I uh, kind of peaked at, at some of the, the recruiting rankings, some of uh, the magazines listening to my podcast. I kind of compiled all that information from over these past few weeks and months and, and made my own list of my top 10 guys, as well as kind of breaking down some film and, and watching some of these guys and just having seen them live in person before. Um, and, and I made my top 10 list. So don't expect to go to ESPN or 24 seven sports and be like looking right at the top 10. I kind of have a, a nice little mix, mix and match of these guys. And I'm going to be giving you a little capsule on, on each of these guys in my top 10. Um, I don't necessarily think these will be, you know, the top 10 picks in next year's draft or the top 10 uh, or all time that these guys go to the NBA. I just think these 10 guys coming in, are my top 10 are just going to be like impact college basketball players this year. Uh, and you're going to remember their names. So we're going to go from 10 to one, uh, just a few minutes on each guy and we'll, we'll get right into it. Number 10, we're going with Judah Mintz guard out of Syracuse. Um, he's one of the freshmen that I'm super high on that might be flying under the radar a little bit, even though he's a top 50 recruit, I think most have him between like 35 and 50 kind of area for their rankings. Uh, I'm pretty high on this Syracuse team. If you listen to that ACC episode, me and Sean did, uh, you know why. Um, and, and I like them to kind of be a surprise team this year. And I think Mintz is going to be one of the catalysts behind that. Bayheim recently called him a few weeks ago a bigger Johnny Flynn. And if that's the case, the Orange are in good shape. Johnny Flynn was a more of an undersized guard, but Mintz is more athletic. And, and like Bayheim said, just bigger and you can do more with your size. So. Um, Flynn averaged in his two years at Syracuse, he combined to average 16 points per game and six assists per game. So if Mintz can replicate that, maybe even just be like a 13 and four and a half, 13 points and like four and a half assist type guy, um, that's going to be a really nice year to go along with some of the recruiting, uh, excuse me, the returning pieces and a, a few of these other recruits that they got in. I think they can be a tournament team. Um, his shot is a work in progress. That's one of the areas of his game where with most players, that's going to be kind of one of the common themes throughout this list. Uh, they just need to continue to work and improve that outside shot. But he impacts the game in a lot of ways, and he's a very good athlete. I think he's going to be a nice piece in that that 2 3 zone that Syracuse runs. Uh, I'm excited to watch him this year. I think Syracuse is in for kind of a rebound season, and we'll see them back in the tournament. And Mintz is going to be one of the main reasons why, due to being one of the top freshmen in college basketball this year, in my eyes. Uh, number nine on this list, we're going to go with Grady Dick, guard out of Kansas. Yes, his name is Grady Dick, and he looks exactly like you think he would. Um, he's 6'7", skinny white kid, about 200 pounds, and he's just a flat-out flat, flat out knockdown shooter, maybe the best shooter in this entire freshman class. I think we're going to see a few games from him where he really just goes off four, five, six, six three-pointers, and he fills in kind of that Christian Braun role as like a floor spacer, but as well as like an energizer for the team. Kansas lost a lot to graduation and to the draft after winning the national title last year. So Dick is going to have a pretty big role from the beginning for this squad. Uh, and I'm interested to see, though, outside of his his shooting, how much kind of an impact he makes. He's going to be able to spot up, come off screens, shoot it off the bounce. He's going to be able to shoot the ball. He just has to impact the game in some other ways. But I think he brings that certain like energy and buzz to a team that Braun used to do for Kansas as well. And that's going to really help this Kansas team projected to finish second in the Big 12 right now. They're my second ranked team in the Big 12 as well. Uh, I think Dick is going to be one of the main reasons why Kansas has has some uh, some good success yet again. Number eight on this list, we're going to go with Cam Whitmore, a guard, wing, forward, kind of hybrid guy uh, for Villanova this year. Probably the best freshman prospect to come into Villanova over the past decade and, and a real legit shot to be a one and done guy. Doesn't really fit the previous like Nova prospect mold as some other guys that, you know, come in, develop. You look at Jalen Brunson, uh, Brian Archidiacono, Mikhail Bridges was really unheralded. Um, Omari Spellman even. Just guys who come in and, and they have to kind of take some of that time back. Josh Hart, uh, Phil Booth even. These guys come in, develop, and, and they eventually work themselves into really good roles. And then a bunch of them have found some, some really good success in the NBA. But Whitmore is a guy who's coming in already with an athletic 
um, and, and high profile, like NBA type frame, and he's ready to go from day one. Uh, that's a bit of an exaggeration because right now he's battling a thumb injury. He might be, might've been higher on this list, but I don't know when he's going to be able to start, but he did, he was there for most of the off season. He was there throughout all the summer. So he's already acclimated to that Villanova culture. He just has to come back and bounce back from this thumb injury, but a six, six wing at 225 pounds, really good off the dribble. And he knows how to use his body and his frame and is very effective in transition. It's going to give, this Villanova team, a uh, athlete and a high level type of guy like that, that they that they're really not that accustomed to having. I'm excited to watch him this year, and I think he can be a really impactful defender on and off the ball as well for a Villanova team that has expectations once again to compete for a Big East crown. Number seven on my list, we're going to go with GG Jackson, forward out of South Carolina. Jackson, probably out of all the guys on this list, is probably like the biggest pickup for a program. Like when I say that, he's going to have the biggest impact on this team. There's other guys on this list that are at Duke, UCLA, Arkansas, Baylor, Villanova, Kansas. We have South Carolina on this list. They're kind of sticking out like a, thor- a sore thumb. Um, it's a huge pickup for the program there. New head coach, Lamont Paris. Um, Gigi Jackson reclassified from 2023 to 2022, and he decommitted from North Carolina and, and committed to South Carolina. So he's a super young prospect. He's still only going to be 17 years old when the season starts up. But he's going to bring life and excitement to a South Carolina program, kind of going through a trans- transition phase right now. I heard a comparison the other day where he's going to kind of be like uh, Anthony Edwards was at Georgia, where he's going to have some big games. Maybe they go out and pull off a, p- a few potential upsets. He's definitely not going to be drafted in my eyes um, as high as Anthony Edwards or be as good as him. But still, it's going to be uh, South Carolina. I expect them to be one of the uh, – Worst teams in the SEC this year, maybe one of the worst like power five, power six teams, but they're going to have a few big games. And I think it's going to be all on the back of Gigi Jackson. Um, he's a very good athlete with a real long frame at 6'9", 210 pounds. So you'd like to see him add some more weight going forward to help him. But that shouldn't be that big of a problem this year. Um, I like him as an isolation scorer and kind of finding ways to score, maybe on the post a little bit, attacking the hoop in the mid range and some ISO spots. Just finding ways to hurt you at all three levels. They're not going to be a great team, like I said, but I could see them pulling off a few upsets and being an exciting team that you kind of tune in and watch. And if you're a gambling man, they're a team that might be like a 15-point underdog to a Auburn or an Arkansas one night, but they find a way to really keep it close, and they're one of those teams that always finds like a way to cover the spread. I think that's kind of the team we're going to see out of South Carolina this year to throw in a little gambling. But Gigi Jackson – uh, excited to watch this guy this year, as I am all these guys on this list. Number six, we're going to go with Dariq Whitehead, guard out of Duke. He probably would have been higher on my list, maybe two or three, but he's coming off an offseason knee surgery. I believe it was meniscus, and I'm not really sure kind of what his role is going to be on this team out of the gate after missing a lot of a lot of time with a whole new program, a new head coach, and a bunch of young freshmen who are coming in competing for jobs as well. Uh, you have to figure missing that time, not really going to help his case, um, even though he was a really – Highly touted recruit, really strong, 6'6 wing, thrives to get into the rim, finishing through contact. Um, If it weren't for the knee injury, he might have been the number one guy on my list. But just because uh, I think he's going to be kind of playing catch up a little bit, um, it's going to impact him a little bit and why I have him at six. But I still think he's going to be really able to dominate guys physically um, more than uh, most other wings in the country. He's got like a football player type build, really smooth, fun player to watch. Another guy, though, has to improve his outside shot. But once he's kind of fully back and back in basketball shape, he, he's going to be one of the top freshmen. It just might take him a little bit, maybe like December, January. You see him really start to cook. Number five on our list, we're going to go with Amari Bailey, guard out of UCLA. I think UCLA is a team that has a legitimate shot to win the national title this year with Tyre Campbell and the Hami Hawkes returning. And then you throw in a stud freshman like Bailey to make kind of a big three there on the perimeter. The Bruins should be a really fun team to watch. Bailey, a lefty, uh, measures in around 6'4", 190 pounds, makes makes him like that ideal size for an off guard in the college game. Very athletic, plays with a lot of energy, a lot of fire. Kind of like Whitehead, very good at getting to the rim and finishing through contact. But once again, the jump shot, work in progress, as it is for most prospects. Um, if you're a, you know, a late-night college basketball fan, UCLA typically on a lot. Then like Arizona, you'll be seeing a lot of Am- Amari Bailey this year. And I think he has a big role for the Bruins from day one. Number four on this list, we're going to go with Derek Lively, center out of Duke. He's the number one recruit on basically all these uh, 24-7 sports, ESPN, all these top-level recruiting services. 
Um, and I think he's going to, he has a good, you know, long-term potential and, and he's going to be better suited for the NBA, but he's a kind of a hard guy to project for me in terms of his college impact, very talented, um, but he's also playing on a very talented and young Duke team. He does certain things well, like rim protect, switch on the guards, be able to guard out on the perimeter, runs the floor well, catches lobs. Um, but he's not going to exactly be making the most like highlight real type, you know, spin move on the baseline, turn and dunk, or, or just a guy that you're able to consistently throw the ball to on the block, get a hook shot, stuff like that. He's does a lot of like things that project well to like the NBA game. And that's what kind of why I think he's the number one prospect in the country right now. Um, he's going to have a lot of big blocks and big dunks thanks to his seven one height and extremely long wingspan. And he's also shown the ability to step out and shoot the outside shot. Um, his best basketball is still ahead of him, I think. And we're most likely going to be seeing that in the NBA as like a stretch big, <clears throat> But not a Duke. I think as his role might not even be the biggest um, out of all these guys. I think Whitehead and another guy I'm going to touch on in, uh, next uh, are going to eventually have just some bigger roles in him. But he's a guy who like is going to be making winning plays and help Duke win a lot of games this year. <clears throat> he's going to be one of the main reasons why he's successful, just because he offers, I think, elite rim protection and really plays with great energy and is able to run the floor really well. Um but he's just not going to really stick out, be like 25 points, 15 rebounds. He's going to be like a 12 point, like seven rebound guy. But when you watch the game, you feel his impact and you notice it each and every, uh, each and every outing that Duke has. Number three on my list, I'm going with another Duke player. So we got three Duke players on this list. Uh, this is one that I'm kind of going out on a limb with, but this is Kyle Filipowski, forward out of Duke, a 6'11 guy, but he can really play basketball. Just uh, like I said, another Duke big man. I'm higher on Filipowski. For, then lively speaking solely on the college game, not the long term. Um, but I think you you can see a scenario where these two guys are playing next to each other because they're both athletic and mobile enough. I think if they have to guard maybe some smaller players, lively is going to be more that like lob catcher and shot blocker. But Phil Pasky, I think, is going to have his ball. The, excuse me, have the ball in his hands a lot. He's going to be shooting it from the outside. He's going to be scoring down low, and I think he's a guy you can kind of like run the offense or facilitate with give it to him at the top of the key of the high post. And he's going to be like a mismatch nightmare for a lot of guys who are bigger and slower trying to guard him. He can grab the rebound and go coast to coast. I think his ability to also step out, stretch the floor and just handle the ball and rebound is just going to make him a really valuable piece for this Duke team this year. Why he's one of the highly touted recruits. Um, but I think some people might think he might get overshadowed by lively. I think Phil Powski is more going to be so that offensive kind of playmaker and Phil, and lively is that, you know, defensive rim protecting type guy I was talking about earlier. So I think Phil Paskey is going to be the most valuable Duke freshman this year from start to finish uh, and find himself on an ACC all league team. Number two, we're going to go with Nick Smith Jr. Or Nick Smith Jr., a guard out of Arkansas. He's another high level scoring guard with another good frame, kind of in that whitehead Bailey mold. He's at 6'5, and he's got a real athletic ability, has a really nice long 6'9 wingspan makes him a really unique prospect, allows him to, you know, use his long arms to go up and finish over defenders and, and multiple different angles. I really value a long wingspan for these guards <clears throat> and just being able to finish over guys like Derek Lively, use your length to get around them and stuff like that. So you don't get your shot blocked and altered as much. He can knock down outside shots as well, making him a really tough cover as he puts on weight and fully commits himself Energy wise and kind of mindset wise on both ends of the floor, he could emerge as this year's best overall college prospect. Victor Webb Binyama has already got that number one spot locked up. Then it looks like Scoot Henderson and those Thompson twins might be fighting for those two, three, four spots. But when you're talking about the best overall like college NBA draft prospect, I think Nick Smith Jr. could be that guy. Arkansas is a legit shot to be the best SEC team this year behind this big time recruiting class. And Smith is going to be the leader behind that group. Uh, so another guy, once again, really excited to watch. And number one, this is a guy that throughout all my readings and listening to podcasts and just kind of watching film on my own, um, this is the guy that I've heard the most about and, and get seen the most hype. And, I, and I, I, I've i read enough, I've listened to enough, and I've watched enough to, to buy in. That's Keontae George, guard for Baylor, the number one freshman on this list, um, six foot four out of IMG Academy, receiving – a lot of buzz around the national media is not only the freshman of the year in the Big 12 Conference, but potentially the player of the year as well. And that's really hard to do. I can't really think of anyone else to do it other than Kevin Durant. Um, he could be the potential player of the year in the entire country, too, 
uh, if he's as good as advertised. Um, if Baylor is in contention for a national title, he should be putting up pretty good, pretty good enough numbers to to compete for that. Very explosive athlete, very hard to defend when he's going in the air vertically. It's very hard to find a defender that that can jump with him. When he's going up, he's not necessarily always going to throw down over you, but he's going to be able to jump and finish over you, and that's such a big thing to be able to do at, at this next level. Um, He's a bucket getter and has the capability to kind of just flip that switch and be like the microwave type guy and go off at any single moment. And that's really what makes him special. We'll be an off guard mostly, but we'll also be a guy, I think, that has the ball in his hands, bringing it up the floor a lot, especially in late game situations. A lot of good guards there with uh, LJ Cryer, and then you have Flagler as well at Baylor. A lot of good guards to work off of where I don't think defenses are going to be able to necessarily just hone in and focus in on him. I think he's going to be the lead driving force behind this Baylor team this year potential to create for others as well as himself. That's what makes him super special and makes him my number one prospect, uh, excuse me, my number one freshman for this upcoming college basketball season. But that'll do it for this episode of college basketball talk here on beef up front. Like I said, we'll be doing a few more season previews. we got the season tipping off next week, but a lot of teams are playing, you know, some division two, II, division three schools. There's a few big games, but over these next few weeks, we'll really, uh, ramp up the coverage, and as some of these better games get going, we'll eventually get into some previews as college football kind of winds down. But just stay tuned over these next uh, week or so as we'll be kind of cranking out some more some more content to get you ready for the college basketball season. But that'll do it for this episode of Beef Up Front here on PickSpot Media, and we will talk soon. Mm-hmm.